How you doing everyone? Welcome to Tapping Off Farm. Today we're going to just do a quick video um, following Rosa and I on a typical harvest day for our community supported agriculture veg box scheme. So it's a beautiful day, uh, very warm here in Aberdeenshire. Today is Thursday and we deliver our veg boxes on Fridays. So today we're picking um, a lot of the vegetables which are non-perishable like beans and uh, beetroot and things, things that aren't, aren't going to be affected by the heat or by sitting for a night in, the, in our packing shed. And then tomorrow morning we get up and we pick the perishable stuff like salads and leafy greens uh, so that they're nice and fresh to be sent out to our members. So yeah, we thought we'd just give you a quick look into what happens on a harvest day. We're going to look at the crops we're picking today. We're going to look at our um, post-harvest operations, our packing shed. We're going to talk about some of the information that we take record of uh, and why. And just give you a little behind the scenes look at what goes on here on a harvest day. friends are helping us today with some of the harvesting uh, they're here volunteering for the day and we've got them picking monge 2 at the moment Rose is up there with them so the monge 2 that we're picking today is a dwarf variety it's called sweet green sugar pod and um, so they're just harvesting everything that's on uh, the plants at the moment we just sweep through and uh, pick everything that is from a couple of inches to the size of a finger we really want to try and pick the monge too before they get too big and start forming um, peas because these are the edible pod variety of pea we leave the really small ones to uh, mature a bit more so we can pick them next week but we really find that we after sweeping through and doing a really good pick um, by the time next week rolls round, uh, they're ready to pick again. So really great crop, really heavy cropper. So it's week four of our 20 week harvest season and we've just drawn up what we're going to be harvesting this week for the box. Uh, that's really just involved us going around the garden, looking at what's ready. We've been taking note of that all week really while we've been working in the garden and some of the things we've already harvested. So we've already harvested most of the cucumbers and about half of the courgettes. And that's just because if we leave them all until one day, we'll probably just have a handful of really big ones rather than like quite a lot of slightly smaller ones. And so we won't be able to divide them amongst our members. So uh, we've written a list here and we tend to just kind of divide this list between the Thursday, which is the day before we deliver, and the Friday, which is the morning of delivery. Um, we get out quite early, and that's normally when we pick the leafy greens, anything that might wilt or go a bit, a bit sad, especially at the moment as it's quite warm. So today, we're gonna be harvesting the uh, Monge 2, um, broad beans. We've got enough cabbages, as James counted the other day. Um, we've already got some cucumbers, but probably going to get the last of them this evening. Uh, going to get the last of the courgettes this evening. And maybe the radish and the kale this evening, depending on how quickly we get the other stuff done. And that should just leave us with doing the salad tomorrow morning, which is great because we tend to not have the most amount of time before delivering as we leave at about 10 in the morning. So it's good to just be able to pick just a salad rather than when we've had very very leafy boxes uh, we we end up with a very very early morning on Friday because we're picking most of the box just in those few hours before we're delivering although it does mean a lovely fresh box for our members 
So, so yeah, so it should be quite a full day of picking today. This is um, really the data that we record for our, well, for our harvest data rather than any of the other sowing and planting data that we record in the garden. And so the things that we've found are the most useful to record are obviously what crop we're harvesting, the total weight of that crop that we've harvested. And then we write down the weight of each share. So we actually have three shares this year. We have a small, a large and an extra large. So explaining some of these numbers here, we've got 46 shares this year. That means 46 small shares, but a large share counts as one and a half small shares and an extra large share counts as two small shares. So really what 46 shares translates to is 37 members, but some of them count as two shares or one and a half shares. So we have 22 small shares, 12 large shares and three extra large shares. So that's how we work it out. We divide, that's why there's a big symbol here to remind us, divide the total weight by 46. That will give us the small share. Then we multiply it by 1.5 to give us the large share and multiply the small share by two to give us the extra large share. So obviously that doesn't work for every vegetable, such as uh, today um, we're going to be cutting some cabbages. Now we can't give everyone an exact equal weight of our cabbages. We hope that they're all a similar size and we basically tend to size order them and give the extra largest the biggest ones and the largest the medium and then smalls the smaller ones. That's always going to take us a bit of time and it's never going to be perfect and there's not much you can do about that. They're vegetables and you can't control them so much. Um, but we always try and be as fair as possible and by having those weights written down, you can then weigh the cabbages, for example, and just see if you're very far off what it should be or not. Um, so we will write down the weight, the average weight of those kind of vegetables the, when it's a full unit, like a calabrese head, a broccoli head, um, sometimes the courgettes if we've got some big marrows and stuff and and we write that down and that enables us to just keep a track of the value of what's going into each box so um so that's really what we record here sometimes especially when you're first um starting out if you want to um be keeping a track of what you're getting from the beds sometimes i write out especially with a new crop or if we're growing it in a new way or planting it in a new density I write how much of the bed that that weight has come from. So say we've like harvested a half of a bed of salad or a half of a bed of radish. I write down that it's a half a bed or a full bed or a third of a bed. And that will just give me an idea of, you know, when then looking back at the data and planning for next year, you know, how much we can really get. And especially if we need to plan for a new business, you know, if we're say selling to a restaurant or something, we really, it's good to have that data. Like how much do you get on average? Cause it will change through the year, but how much do you get on average um, from what portion of a bed? And you know what you can offer then and at what times of year. So it's all really useful information. Um, I then translate this into a, an online spreadsheet and it just has price data in it. And I can um, type in the, the crop and that basically um, will refer to another table in the spreadsheet that calculates the um, basically the price of what's gone into each box each week. Um, that doesn't actually matter for anything other than our own information to make sure that we are not giving people much less value than what they're paying for. Every year it's been definitely over the value that they've paid for, so that's nice for us to know, to actually be able to communicate that to our members. But also, again, if you wanted to start selling to restaurants or if you were just pl only planning on selling to restaurants and things, you really want to know, uh, yeah, the value of the vegetables that you're selling them. And we use the Soil Association Organic Horticultural Produce price data, which you can find for free online. Uh, we're not certified organic, but we follow all organic principles. So this is the best like gauge of the prices for us. Um, yes, so that's all we really have for our harvest data. Um, another time I can always take you through the um, kind of records for what we what we try and write down about each bed and what's growing in it and when we've sown and when we're planting and things um, but yeah we think that it kind of is pretty helpful to have this information because it really means that you're backed up with as much detail as possible if you ever have to answer any questions or advise anyone on on their own business so yeah that's the whiteboard um, and now we're just gonna get picking Thank 
onion plot as well and I'm going to get started picking the broad beans so we've got, we've got three rows of broad beans this year um, they've got some good pods on them they haven't podded as much as we'd like um, we feel they flowered quite early when they were quite short still and um, we had hoped that we'd get a second flush of flowers perhaps and get a few more beans coming but it looks like we've just got what we've got here which is um, kind of clusters of beans along the, the bottom part of the stalks so beggars can't be choosers we're going to pick what we've got uh, sure they're going to be lovely beans and this variety of broad bean is Eleonora I think we've grown this before you can see we've put a support on, around them that's just very simple a few stakes around the corners of the beds with rope or string around because when they get to this height and this time of year when we get the strong winds coming they get they're a bit leggy and they tend to fall over so giving them the support just makes it's a bit kinder on the plant but it makes it a lot easier for us to harvest as well when they're not flopped all over the beds so very easy just get some string around them keep them upright and you're all good all right time to get picking down the final hole of the monge too and actually I'm gonna, gonna weigh it just weigh these 3.1 great so the next stage is to get out the calculator and basically what I do is just divide by the numbers that I explained earlier and I'll write that on this chart here so that whoever is, whether it's me, James or Shirley who helps out a lot with packing the boxes, they'll know they can just refer to the board here no matter who's in here and they'll know what portions to put in each box. So I'll just calculate that now. Um, often, actually, just I, I often round the total down a little bit before I calculate this. That just allows for any kind of uh, error in the measurements. Um, and it means that we don't end up packing most of the boxes and then finding that actually we don't have enough and then you have to go and take a little bit out of every single box. So often I kind of round down the total. So this one I'll, I'll at least round down to seven kilos instead of instead of 7.37. And that will really mean that we make sure we have enough to put in everyone's box. Um, so I'm just gonna do seven divided by 46 and that gives us, well, it says here 152 grams a person I'm going to call that 150 um, that's just because it's more of a round number to do with and again it's tending to round down a little bit just to make sure you know if there was mud in the box or there's some that we end up when we're packing it some are just not okay to put in the box you know they've got some mold on them or something um, or they're just broken so we tend to put those aside so really just rounding down just allows for any of that kind of thing to happen so I'm going to put 150 grams here and then I know that the extra large therefore will be 300 grams and I should really be able to do this but it's 228 so I'll put 220 grams for the large and that's it and then we just cross that out um, and next James James has brought down the broad beans and just harvested them all right so I've just weighed this uh, box of broad beans we've got just over 12 kilos in there uh, so that was from one row of a double row bed. So I'm just going to go up and pick the other remaining row. And I think that should do us for this share. We don't want to overwhelm people with broad beans too much. It's, it's a kind of love it or hate it crop. Um, I love them. 
but some people get a bit sick of having them in their veg boxes I've heard. So this is our post harvest uh, area, our packing shed. Uh, and this is where all the magic happens on a Thursday and a Friday. So the market garden isn't far away at all. It's, it's uh, just outside this window and a little bit further. Not difficult for us to come down with heavy bins of produce. Um, we bring it in and we've got some very strong tables that we can put our heavy loads of vegetables on top. Weighing scales just here at the door so it's not far to carry anything heavy in onto the scales. Um, the board right here to then go from the scales to the board. Uh, we've got things like rubber bands and pens and harvest knives all stored in this area. Towards the back of the room is where we start packing the boxes. So my mum will come in uh, today and lay all the boxes out for us. So we've got these blue boxes. These are uh, three times recycled now from veg box businesses around Aberdeenshire. So the blue boxes, this is our small, our standard box. Um, we're using cardboard boxes this year as our large. And then we've got a few extra larges, which are these big green crates. We've also got extra boxes stacked above us here um, for everybody gets three boxes each. If they end up hanging on to all three boxes, then we have to ask them to come to the farm to collect. This year, we've um, really asked people to bring a bag to their collection point. Remember, we use pickup points for our veg boxes. We don't deliver door to door. We take these boxes to a few different businesses or shops around our 15 mile radius from the farm. And our members come to those collection points and pick up their box. So we really ask them to bring a bag and transfer their share into a bag. And then we can pick up their empty box next week. Um, so yes, it's a great wee room. It's, it is quite small. It's starting to um, get quite maxed out with the number of shares that we're doing this year. Um, we've got all our um, plastic bags for salads and things up on the shelf here. Um, this behind me, this was taken from Curtis Stone's uh, Urban Farmer book. This is um, basically a drying rack for salad. It's just very handy to mix up our salad mixes on. Um, you can come in and empty a whole bucket of salad onto here. You can mix different varieties together. You can check through the crop just to see if there's any leaves we don't want, any weeds that have snuck in there, any insects to take out. Um, we do have a couple of fans just to keep the place cool on a hot day like today, but it really is a cool room. It's stone walls. Um, it's got a very, it doesn't have a huge door, not many windows, so it stays nice and cool. Got a stone floor. Um, we've got a sink for washing our hands um, and uh, a radio, which can be essential for stopping you getting too bored when you're doing salad bag after salad bag. Um, so yeah, it really pays off to think about how to design your post harvest uh, area and your packing shed. Um, our wash station is outside of this window where we've got um, a root washing table, which again was taken from Curtis's book, the design, and we made that from um, reclaimed materials that we found on the farm. So yeah, we've been using this shed for the last five seasons. Um, I think if we expanded to beyond um, our 46 shares that we're doing this year, we would have to have a bigger shed. But right now that's fine. And we can back the van up to this door and just load the boxes in on a Friday morning and take them off to the pickup points. Okay, so better carry on with the harvest. next Rosa? <laughs> um, just gonna grab the last of the courgettes. I harvested most of them yesterday. I try and do it every few days um, so that we don't get many massive ones. Um, although I left it a few too many days. So yesterday I did the main harvest. There's quite a few larger ones. But I left a few because I knew they could get a little bit bigger over the next day. They grow incredibly fast. So um, and we've given them a feed recently. So I think they're growing even faster. So I'm just going to get the last of them now, add them to the haul that we already got. And then, yeah, that'll be fun kind of divvying them out between the boxes. It's one of the biggest head scratches is 
getting equal amounts of different size courgettes in all the boxes. So, so what variety of courgette have we got this yeah. year? This one is Nero di Milano. Um, so it's a, it's a dark, I guess Nero, black uh, courgette. And it seems to have a bit of a softer skin. And then the other, other variety that we've got, which is called Cocazelle. And that is... <laughs> This one here, the stripy one, is uh, the Cocazelle variety. So we just really grow these two varieties at the moment. We have tried some other colours and shapes and things, but these are just the most reliable for us. How are you getting on? Okay, yeah, just finished the um, courgette. So quite a few on the smaller side um, but often people quite like it like that so um, and when they have a nice flour on we tend to try and leave it because they are very tasty fried and stuffed and things um, so I've done them I'm gonna add them to the rest of the haul but I'm just gonna get the last of the cucumbers and see how we can split them between our members this week um, we don't often do this but we think that we might not have enough to give everyone one this week so what we might do is give as many people as we can um, some cucumber and then it'll be the next week the people that didn't get it this week they'll get some next week so that's just a way of meaning that we do get them to everyone rather than no one which is better um, and we've just got to keep it in our heads what what locations that we've given the cucumbers to or not um, and I'm hoping as the season goes on uh, we'll get a more consistent number of cucumbers and we can uh, divvy them out more evenly between the boxes so we'll just go and see what's left there. So I've just picked a bag full of cucumbers from this bed here. Uh, the variety is Kalunga, K-A-L-U-N-G-A. -A. Um, it's the first time for us growing it this year, um, but we found it really successful so far. So. Um, finished picking we got ended up getting about 21 kilos uh, so that's not too bad off of two 15 meter rows um, I'm gonna go and pick the cabbages now this will be the first picking of cabbages we've made this season had a bit of rough trot our cabbages uh, we had a lot of slug damage so um, I'm a little bit uh, hesitant to see how they're doing but we know that we've definitely got uh, enough heads to give everybody um, whether they might have a few stowaway slugs in it is another matter so to harvest the cabbages, I'm going to get myself a wheelbarrow because they're quite bulky. Um, we found that's the easiest way of doing it, to transport them to the packing shed. Um, we're going to harvest them with a pair of loppers uh, so that we can cut the stem just below ground level, leaving the root ball behind in the ground. And this just saves time. Um, quite often we, in previous seasons, we've uh, just cut the head off with a knife and left the stalk in the ground and then had to go back whenever we've got time which was usually a couple of months later to remove it but we're trying our best to be a bit more on it this season and just get the job done um, so that the bed uh, can be left alone knowing that we don't have another job to think about when the season starts closing down so for those of you who follow our farm vlogs at our youtube channel you'll know that our our cabbages are in a plot that was is a new plot for us this season um, we had to break new ground and make these uh, beds um, a few months ago and um, they're covered at the moment the cabbages are covered with this mesh to stop the cabbage root fly which has given us massive headaches in the past um, so we're very pleased to have this mesh and hopefully we can see just now but hopefully there's no damage from cabbage root fly so I'm going to take the netting off and then we can have a look and see how the cabbages are and then get picking yeah these are definitely Definitely at a size to have to pick. Uh, this is a kind of this is a green cabbage. 
um, I think this variety is um, green, uh, green Express. Um, so as the name suggests, a nice green fast growing cabbage. Folks, this has come to the end of the day. We spent the afternoon harvesting for our fourth veg box delivery of the season tomorrow. So we brought in the courgette, the manche too, the radish, the cucumber, broad beans, and the cabbage. So that's pretty good. We're gonna do the kale tomorrow and the salad tomorrow. Um, but yeah, definitely time for us to call it a day. And wake up nice and early tomorrow to pick that last bit of produce and get it delivered. Just cutting the last of this salad bed. This was cut a couple of weeks ago. Um, it was already going to flower so um, really it was we were just saving it a couple of weeks ago but um, these mustard greens have done the best out of it so these ones are grown back and so they're going to be mixed into the salad today to add a bit of spicy crunch to the salad and then the rest is going to be some nice uh, mix of different varieties of lettuce so um, yeah it should be a really nice mix today a mixture of things from in the polytunnel and outside good morning folks the next day it's 7.30, Rosa and I are back out in the market garden and we're just picking the last remaining crops that we need for today's veg box delivery. So that's the salads and bunches of kale. Quite a cold day today so everything's going to be extra fresh and crisp. Just picked a few hours before we deliver it. And we've got five pickup points including the farm that we deliver to. These are businesses in the local area who support us by acting as a pickup point for us and of course 
we're doing our best to support them by getting our members through their doors once a week. Um, so it's a nice little relationship that we've started up. Rosa is picking some giant red mustard that's outside and I'm just about to head into the polytunnel and pick some of the lettuces that we've got growing below the cucumbers in there. Just using a serrated steak knife to cut the outer leaves of the lettuce rather than cutting it completely off and this leaving the middle leaves to regrow means that we get multiple harvests from these lettuces. This is our fourth harvest from this row of lettuce. got the salad picked, I mixed it all up on the mixing shelf, we'll bag that in a minute. I'm just going to take the cabbages and disperse them around the boxes uh, and then we're pretty much done. We're not sure we're going to be able to get the kale in the box today um, so we don't have to pick the kale, it can sit definitely until next week. We've picked everything in the garden that's at its prime and ready to pick so nothing's gone to waste so that's all being harvested and um, yeah it's looking like a good box. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed that little insight into a harvest day here at Tappanoff Farm. I haven't managed to show you every single piece of what we get up to, but I think you've got a good idea now of the work that's involved in uh, planning a veg box day, getting everything ready, the type of um, infrastructure that we need to do that, um, and uh, the variety of crops that we need to pick to do a veg box. So I'm just finishing off packing up these salad bags and doing the larges and the extra larges and uh, getting a very big bag of salad this week so yeah get the salad in gonna go and have my breakfast do my chores uh, and then we'll be packing up the car um, and all that's left is to deliver it out to all the local villages and towns that live around us and um, get these 
shares of vegetables out to their rightful owners. Um, this has all been pre-bought um, with our community supported agriculture scheme. So that's great for us as a farmer knowing that we've got our income already in and great for the consumer and our, our members knowing that they're going to get um, as much of a harvest as we can possibly give them. Alright folks, I hope that's helped for your own uh, market garden projects or just for your own gardens and uh, thanks so much for the support on Patreon and we'll catch you soon.